Researchers at the New York Fed have just come out with a report that indicates that productivity fell 4% among workers who moved from the office to remote work as part of the pandemic. And we're far enough away from the pandemic, I think, now to where we can look back and say, are, were, were these policies uh, that were implemented, rightly so, uh, to counter some of the, the, the dangers of the pandemic, uh, were they good in the long run? And, and should we hang on to them? And this is a conversation that, you know, I'm having a lot with executives that, that I speak to and, you know, around returning to the office, returning um, to the workplace, whether that's right for you know the majority of the workforce. And, and I'll preface a lot of this conversation here with uh, with the idea that, like, I, I, I'm completely empathetic to the, you know, to the fact that there are people out there, there, there are workers out there who need to work from home, you know, people who are. Uh, sick or unwell or, you know, uh, need to look after children. There, there's lots of different reasons why somebody would need to work from home, and uh, I'm completely empathetic to that idea. What's interesting about this report from the New York Fed is that it kind of backs a lot of the the stuff that we've been talking about here at the Daggerfin Channel for, for years now, I'd say. And it started during the pandemic with the idea that creative work was the work that suffered the most uh, because creativity requires like an, a, a personal collaboration. And that's sometimes difficult to do. It's difficult to whiteboard. It's difficult to kind of get creative juices flowing over Zoom or over a phone call. You can do a lot of work over Zoom uh, and over a phone call, but typically the creative stuff's a little bit more challenging and especially work that requires many people's input. That can be challenging in a remote setting, and there are of course tools that have improved over time, but it was still a little challenging. And we've been we, we've been kind of sounding that horn since the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, but this is really interesting because it looks at uh, call center workers at uh, one particular Fortune 500 company, and they looked at around 2,000 individuals. And the findings are that yeah, okay, productivity falls four percent, but what also happens are downstream effects to this. So customer service falls the quality of the customer service falls um quite dramatically uh, you know over the, over time if you compare pre-pandemic to now what you also get is uh the quantity of calls that each individual takes falls so that's another productivity sign so quality and productivity falling but what i think is very interesting about this report is that they talk about career trajectories and the idea that what happens when you have a remote workforce is that when you compare pre-pandemic to you know now, what you get is workers who uh, are they're less engaged in training sessions. They're less engaged in one-on-one -on -one meetings. They hold fewer one-on-one -on -one meetings, and that's both sided, right? That's the individual. I mean, that's both management and and kind of uh, the individual contributor level. Both sides probably having less incentive to even you know talk to each other to interact. And I think that's a natural human kind of instinct. You know, when we're when we're face to face with people, there's a natural inclination to want to have have a uh, interaction, and so, you know, the, the these are things that that are probably thought of less. I mean, it's so convenient to to roll out of bed and and kind of roll up to your computer if you're in a position that you're allowed to work in front of a computer all day, and just and and just kind of t type away at the computer and, and do those things. But the things that people forget is that over you know a career is a long a, a long thing. Right, forty years, say for most people, and if you're going to be less engaged at work, less engaged in training sessions, participating in fewer training sessions, demanding fewer and fewer one on ones with your management, you're just going to see kind of careers that, you know, if you look, if you compare a chart and you you had like kind of two lines from the bottom left to the top right, a, a steeper one that was you know the the potential trajectory of an individual's career and then a, a flatter one that is th this is probably what would happen as a function of fewer or less engagement and that engagement question is something that we've been trying to tackle a lot at Daggerfin talking a lot with clients and, and stuff or, around how do you make a, a workforce more engaged and and whose kind of onus does it fall on right whose onus is it to, to, to try and engage individuals and you know that that's a question that I think is going to last probably the the entirety of 
my career going forward, the, this idea that the workforce is changing, the, you know, the, the dynamics and the things that we need from work are changing. And, you know, th there's probably a lot of kind of growing pains that are going to happen here. But one thing is becoming more and more clear is that if we're going to commit to remote work for, you know, lots of companies out there or, or you know, don't, we either have to accept a lower level of productivity and quality. And as a society, I don't know if we're ready for that, right? I, you can think of even just your own personal anecdotes around customer service and quality and things like that. Like, are we all ready to accept a lower level of, of productivity and quality in just our daily lives around us and the things that we have to experience? Um, or are we going to demand more? And what are the things and the sacrifices that we have to make to demand more? So, you know, that it's, it's something that kind of, I play around with with my own in my own mind, but the executives that I talk to, this is something that we talk about a lot. So, just really interesting stuff. I think it's it was interesting that the the New York Fed came out with this report. Very interesting from a perspective of uh, who they tracked, right? The the two thousand call center workers at a Fortune five hundred company, and the findings. Not just that productivity fell, not just that quality fell. Those are things that you could probably you know one on one is too. Um, but that from a career trajectory standpoint, what you find is is lower engagement, fewer training sessions that people are participating in, fewer one-on-one -on -one meetings, just the whole infrastructure around careers and what it means to be in a workplace and a workforce and trying growing and, and bettering yourself. That all kind of falls apart a little bit uh, if we commit to remote work. So, you know, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Uh, I'd be really interested to know your thoughts on, pro on productivity and remote work, quality and remote work. And, I, I, you know, kind of whether if you've been as a part of this transition to remote work as opposed to a return to office what the trade-offs have been for you we'd be very interested to find out until next time